Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, <coughs> Coach Rick and uh, Greg McGarrity will each have a, a brief opening statement, and then we'll take your questions. Please remember we have floor microphones, so if you'll raise your hand when you have a question, and we'll get one of the floor microphones to you. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, I wrote some notes. I don't think I'll need them, but I'll take a peek if I need to. But the first thing I want to do is just uh, thank uh, the Bulldog Nation in general. I want to thank uh, Coach Vince Dooley and Michael Adams for hiring me and for Greg McGarity and President Jerry Moorhead for letting me stick around a while. And I uh, want to especially thank all the current players and former players that have had the opportunity to coach here at Georgia, all the staff members that uh, have worked so hard uh, alongside me to make Georgia an even better place uh, than it already is. And, uh, you know, the red coat, the red coats, the, the cheerleaders, the, the students, you know, all the dog walks, all the memories have been just uh, phenomenal for myself and for my family. And uh, Georgia's been our home, and Athens has been uh, a true blessing to me and my family. And I'm just very thankful for all the. Uh, all the time that I've been able to spend here, and uh, it's been great. So with that, I'll let uh, Greg be able to say what he wants to say, and then you guys can let it rip. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> well, first of all, we want to thank Mark, Catherine, and their family for dedicating the past 15 years to the University of Georgia and to the Athens community. Thank you. Uh, days like yesterday are the most difficult in our profession, especially when dealing with someone who has the character of Mark Rick and we sincerely appreciate Mark's professionalism at all times. We look forward to having the opportunity to continue to work alongside Mark and Catherine in the future at the University of Georgia. Okay. Questions? <coughs> Mark, have you agreed to take a, another role within the athletic department? Have I? No, I have not. Um, I've been given an opportunity uh, to stick around and it's not been defined totally, but uh, in some way, shape, or form to continue to bless the players, uh, number one, and the, and the university in general, and, and the athletic association, just any way that I could be helpful. I've been offered an opportunity to do that. Um, my plan right now, <clears throat> quite frankly, is to uh, you know get prepared for this bowl game. Uh, I'm really looking forward to coaching these, these boys one more time. And, um, and, but in the meantime, since I'm not on the road recruiting, excuse me, since I'm not on the road recruiting right now, I'll have um, an opportunity to look at a lot of options. I think, I think there are going to be a lot of options to weigh. And uh, so I'm, I'm blessed in that way and thankful about that. So I, I, I'm just not ready to say what I want to do yet, but it's very, um, very attractive to, to have the thought of uh, being able to stay in Athens and, and in some way, shape, or form continue to, to be uh, someone who can uh, help these, uh, you know, help our young people. Please raise your hand and cover the floor microphone to you. Uh, Mark, I know you, you just said you're weighing your options, but is continuing to coach an option for you? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Uh, I'll say this um, if and when I do coach again, I'm looking forward to coaching again in terms of, you know, being more hands-on. Uh, I, miss, I miss coaching quarterbacks. I miss calling plays. I miss that part of it. Um, so whether it's in the role of head coach, coordinator, quarterbacks coach, whatever it is, um, if in fact I choose to do that, I, I, I'd be really excited about coaching QBs again and, and getting in the middle of the offensive strategy, and, and not that I wasn't in it, but I wasn't calling it. And I think I'd be uh, more apt to do that again. <clears throat> Greg, when did you know it was time for a change? When did you come to its conclusion that Mark was no longer fit for the job? Well, as coming home from the Tech game, uh, Mark and I spoke later that evening and uh, agreed to meet the next morning. So. Uh, that's when that's I wanted to wait till the season was over and basically that was the timing of it. Was there a moment before that? I don't think you 
No, I think you, you always prepare. Uh, I think that's the job of an athletic director, whether it be football, basketball, whatever sport is, you never know when the, the coach is going to come in and, and say they're done. Uh, I recall experiences at uh, my former institu institution to where that happened. And I knew I didn't want that to happen again. So uh, lessons learned there. But no, it's Saturday after the Tech game. And you know it was a very quiet ride home for me to, to really uh, dig down deep and, and make sure that's, that's what my, heart, my gut told me to do. Coach, how about just the whirlwind of you talked to us on Saturday, right. no concern, according to you, in terms right. of the job, but then not even 24 hours later to get this news. Right. Well, that is part of the business. You know, it's not um, all that shocking to think that it could happen, but, you know, my focus was always on, you know, moving forward and uh, recruiting and, and uh, you know, bringing in the best class we could bring in and, and continue to build. Uh, you know, a future team that would be able to, you know, win a championship. But, um, you know, it didn't work out that way. But I'll, I'll say this, uh, <clears throat> I guess it's a lot like how I uh, manage things in the middle of a game. You know, if things don't go exactly the way you want and you know they, they, that they don't, they don't always go the way you want, then, uh, you know, you can spend a lot of time trying to figure out what happened or who did what or, or you could figure out where you're at and then think of in terms of what do, what do we do next to win, what, you know. So instead of trying to find a kid that made a mistake or try to find the coach that did something he shouldn't have done or maybe was responsible for something or want to chew somebody's rear end or whatever, I mean, my, my focus has always been on where are we and what do we got to do to win, you know. And I kind of feel like the same way right now. You know, I, I, I see, you know, where I am, Georgia sees where they are. And uh, everybody's going to do what they think is in the best interest to, to have success in the future. So that's kind of how I look at it. Uh, Greg, it, you spent six paragraphs in your statement lauding mm -hmm. Coach Rick for his leadership and his character right. and his performance. Right. And Jerry Moorhead spent another mm -hmm. long paragraph lauding everything about him. Right. What then was this decision based on? Well, that remains to be between uh, Mark and myself. Uh, we had a, uh, a good, mature adult conversation on Saturday, uh, Sunday morning for an hour, hour and a half or so. And uh, you know, those things will, will really remain between Mark and myself. Greg, this is uh, to you. Um, what are your thoughts on um, Jeremy Pruitt and whether or not if the new coach would want him back on staff, would you welcome that? Well, I'd rather I'd rather us to focus on Mark today. Uh, that's we can talk about those things later. But today's all about Mark and you know the decision that was reached yesterday. So I'd I'd just prefer to defer those uh, to a later date. Are we gonna let the young lady ever get get a chance to speak? <laughs> well, you maybe you're next. Well, well okay. I don't know if you need a mic or not. Oh, not not to hurt. I'm are they okay without the mic, or do we need the mic for? Yeah, let's, let's get a mic back here. Yeah. Let's run that one back to the yeah. And you're next. I was actually going to have her after you, but <laughs> Schultz is next. What will happen with the contract? That's a substantial amount of money still left on the table. Well, as I said earlier, uh, even though it hadn't been executed, uh, a deal's a deal. A handshake uh, to me is a signed agreement. So uh, the contract that our board approved at the uh, previous board meeting is in full effect. and. Uh, Will certainly be honored. So uh, there are no issues there, even though it's not executed. And that's the way it's always been. I mean, we're <coughs> we're uh, a handshake means something here. Mark, this obviously is a new situation for you. What ultimately do you think will determine what you want to do next, and right. how long do you foresee yourself taking with this decision? Right. Uh, that's a good question. E even uh, these next two weeks. I mean, they were all earmarked for recruiting. I mean, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You know, till the dead period, I was going to be on the road every single day for 14 days or whatever it was. So now that I'm not recruiting, there's really nothing on my calendar. And so even that bit of time will allow me to decompress a little bit and 
excuse me, and try to just prayerfully consider what's next. Um, and then there may be more opportunities that come in the next few hours, few 24, 48 hours, that type of thing. I mean, I'm going to listen to uh, anybody that has interest in me, coaching or not. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, just really in any area or any arena, that's a possibility. So, um, but I, you know, since 1986, I've always really tried to um, uh, just try to walk daily with the Lord and, and try to figure out what he really wants me to do. And, and I want to try to be obedient to that. Um, I was reading, uh, not to bore everybody, but reading Matthew uh, uh, a couple weeks ago and when, uh, when Christ, prior to before he got uh, crucified, he was, he was praying. And while he was praying, he's sweating blood. And, um, and he's saying, Lord, take this cup from me. Please take this cup from me. He prayed that three times. But every time after he prayed it, he said, not, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. And uh, so that's kind of been uh, my thoughts over the last couple of weeks even, just, you know, Lord, your will be done. Whatever your will is, that's, that's what I want to do. So I just don't know what that looks like yet. <clears throat> Mark, why did you decide to coach in the, in the bowl game? I know some coaches, uh, when they're not right. retained. Oh, man. I mean, I was, very, I was very thankful for the opportunity. You kidding me? Get to coach one more time with these guys and finish the season? Yeah, I was, I was all for that. If, if it wasn't offered to me, I'd have asked for it. Yeah, very excited about that. With all due respect, Coach, Mr. McGarrity, is there a short list of candidates, and when will the search begin? Well, I just, I mean, real briefly, I mean, we will start immediately. But again, this is about Mark today. I mean, I, I really won't have hardly anything to say about the new search. I think that's not appropriate right now. But uh, in due time, I'm sure a, a new head coach will be announced. And I'll, I'll say this, if it's all right. Um, spoke with the team last night, and um, just help them understand that, you know, things like this happen as part of the business. Um, and I encourage them, number one, to, to behave and to, to know that we're going to keep everybody accountable to anything we've always held them accountable to academically and socially and, and all those things. Uh, <clears throat> but to also realize that they're basically making a first impression for their new head coach starting yesterday. And I even told him about the time that I took the job at Georgia while I was still at Florida State. And I was trying to do both jobs at the same time, trying to coach the bowl game at Florida State. We were playing in the national championship. And, and you know, so in the morning, I was trying to be Florida State. In the afternoon, I was trying to do Georgia and all that. And that little Nokia phone would ring, you know, every so often. And about every other time, it was about some kid not behaving like he should, you know. So I'm like, oh, here we go before I even get on campus. Got to deal with that, but uh, but I told him it's really important to uh, to do the right thing and make a good first impression before you even meet whoever it is, and then to be be supportive of whoever that is. You know, uh, understand that the more everybody buys in, the faster everybody buys in, the the, the better off it's going to be. And then the last thing I asked him is to uh, you know let's finish this bowl season great. We've got a bunch of seniors that are shooting for their 40th win as a class and. You know, it's kind of hard to do, and it's, you know, it means a lot to those guys. And, and uh, so those are the things that I talk to, the, talk to them about. Coach, when you made the trip to see uh, Jacob Eason after the Auburn game, was that your decision to make that trip? And oh, yeah. what was the message? Was there kind of a message that yeah. maybe this could potentially oh, happen? It was definitely my, um, is my decision to make that trip. Uh, talking about Jacob Eason and uh, actually two other guys that signed financial aid papers, which, which allowed that to happen, to have free access to him. Uh, the message was basically going there to enjoy each other's company, number one. And number two is get ready to play some ball for the dogs, you know. And uh, so uh, it was just a matter of knowing that, you know, he's a very important part of the recruiting class. Your quarterback is. Uh, you know, uh, a big part of that. Usually, you know, you, when you have a quarterback like that commit early, you ask him to, to lead already. You know, you're not here yet, but you can lead by helping build your class. And 
think he's done a great job of that. Um, and I think there's a lot of guys that have been very excited about uh, the possibility of coming to Georgia in, in this particular class. And, and uh, they all still, I mean, they know each other. They love each other. They've bonded with each other. And, and just if you're curious the message I'm giving those guys, and what I, I talked to Jacob last night, as a matter of fact, you know, I said just, I said be patient. I said see who the next guy is. You might get really excited about that. And the rest of the guys might get really excited about that. Just, you know, I'm not saying don't check out other options and all that kind of stuff to be, you know, to be proactive or whatever, but don't don't jump the gun. You, you chose Georgia for a reason, and it was more than just uh, me or Coach Schottenheimer or whatever it may be. Uh, so, you know, I encouraged him, and I'll encourage all these guys, uh, you know, to do the same because it's a, they're a great group of guys, and uh, there's a chance for them to come in uh, and be one of the best classes in the United States of America. And uh, you know, I said, might it be a blessing to be on the front end, on the front end of a guy's contract rather than you know year 16? So uh, it may be a blessing to you. So that that's kind of what I told him last night. Coach, I want to congratulate you on your time at Georgia, and thank you, and uh, definitely for. Uh, the, the respect and giving you've shown to the media and the Bulldog Nation. As you can imagine right now, there is some, a lot of folks out there that are upset. And uh, is there anything you can say to the fan base yeah. that kind of <clears throat> calms things a little? Yeah, well, just, I guess you could tell everybody that I'm gonna be fine. My wife and I will be fine. We're, we're empty nesters. Uh, we're still madly in love. We. Uh, We'll probably get to do some things we just haven't been able to do in the past. I've been coaching for 33 years straight, and that's that's a long grind, and uh, it can it can wear a man out a little bit, especially sitting in the head coach's chair. But um, but we're very excited about our future, it, and it may very well be that we stay in Athens. We may stay in Athens for good. I, I don't know what'll happen yet, but it's a very strong draw for us. It's a very uh, uh, attractive option for us. And, uh, and I would just say to the fans, too, you know, as soon as a new guy gets named, there's going to be a, there's going to be electricity around here. There's going to be a lot of excitement and a lot of momentum and, uh, and support, you know, support him and support his staff and, and obviously support the players. And, you know, everybody, you know, Georgia football is going to be around a whole heck of a lot longer than I'm going to be alive and has been around, you know, for over 100 years and all that. So. Uh, I just appreciate everybody and how they've treated me and my family. Um, Coach, what was the, the reaction to the guys when you told them uh, the meeting yesterday? And then how are you taking their reaction and all yeah. their support that they're showing for you? Yeah. Well, it's not like we had open dialogue. You know, there you have a group of 125 guys in the room. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I just told them what happened. And uh, also told them that I'm going to be around another month, you know. We don't need to get all crazy and emotional tonight. But, um, uh, but I just told them the things that I mentioned before. Everybody needs to. It's just kind of like when we went through that stretch in October where things weren't going well. And you got a group of people, men, coaches, players, everybody having a lot of, a lot of emotion. A lot of different emotions, you know, and, and I told him, I said, you, you all know how you feel right now, okay? And I, I don't know how everybody feels, but I, everybody knows how they feel individually. And, uh, and I said, so what we're going to do today is talk about how, how we need to act. Uh, because you may feel a certain way, but you need to act another way. And you may feel a certain way about how the season was going, but we need to act this way to, to right things, make things right and to handle adversity the right way. And the same thing I basically was true last evening. I said there's a lot of emotion, a lot of, you know, a lot of things that are going on, but let's, let's talk about how we need to act in this situation you know, to do the right thing and to, and to help them uh, prepare for the rest of their careers here and their, and their futures uh, beyond that. But I'm sure after that last game, it'll be a little different. That'll be, I'm sure, a lot more emotional for me personally. Mark, by nearly everyone's account, you did it the right way. You were the ultimate ambassador for this university, second winningest head coach in the history of the school, averaged nearly 10 wins a year. Why do you think you're out of a job? Yeah. Well, I just think that um, 
uh, I think 15 years is a long time, and I think that uh, I think the expectations have been built to the point where if you don't win a championship, it's kind of miserable around here. And uh, I mean, when we don't make it to Atlanta, I'm, I'm miserable. I'm miserable too, you know. And I've always said that uh, I respect our fans. I love our fans. I, I respect the media. I love a couple people in the media. No. Um, no, I really, I, I mean, I love everybody, quite frankly, but, um, and I know everybody's got a job to do, but, um, you know, our, our sport is a very uh, passionate sport, and it's a very public sport. Uh, you know, the jobs that we do, everybody seems to have an opinion on it, but, but you can't have the, you can't have all the excitement and the, and the cheering and all that without the other. I mean, if things don't go the way people want them to go, I can understand them being disappointed, and, I can understand them uh, thinking there's a better way and all that kind of thing. I, re I respect that. And uh, I think it just it got to the point where uh, there wasn't enough confidence that my leadership could get it done. And that's, that's the prerogative of uh, you know, the people in charge, and, and uh, I understand that. Greg, along, the, along those same lines, was this about winning championships and, and how long it has been since uh, they've been won here? No, I mean, uh, again, I don't want to get into detail of a conversation that Mark and I had. That's that's between us. So uh, there are a lot of things we talked about, and so I'll just leave it at that. Coach, you seem uh, very at ease and maybe more so than you have been in a while. Can yeah. you just talk about how you feel about this yeah. and maybe the opportunities? Well. Like I said a minute ago, 33 years straight, that's a long time. And, uh, and it's, a very, it's just a very busy life. There's not many breaks in the action. And, uh, you know, the term people have said, you know, the days are long, but the, but the seasons go fast. They really do. And before you know it, your, your life's flashed before your, before your eyes. And when you, when you sit in the head coach's chair, it's like, I mean, it might be times 10. I mean, you think you think you know, but you don't know till you get there, and um, and it can. Uh, I mean, over time, it can wear you down a little bit, and uh, so the weight of a lot of the responsibility that I've had for a long time is gone. It's not totally gone. I have a responsibility between now and the bowl, but there's certain things that I'm really not responsible for anymore. Mean, just for example, the recruiting. I mean, I was about to go. I was about to go 14 days straight. And, and what happens in recruiting is you'll have about, you got nine guys out there and they're just waiting to grab you. You know, somebody's going to pick you up at 5 a.m. and keep you till three in the afternoon. And then another guy's going to grab you and wear you out till about midnight. You get to the hotel maybe at one and then at 5 a.m. you're ready to go for the next guy to grab you. And, you know, and I'm, I'm being facetious to a certain degree, but I mean, you, you just go and go and go and go. And that's just one aspect of it. So, uh, you know, the responsibility for the student athletes, all the academic uh, responsibilities, all the um, decisions that have to be made in strength and conditioning. And I mean, just this, it's just such a huge um, job that uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the weight of that job is, is, not, is not there right now. And, uh, but the other thing is, just like I said before, um, I really want God's will for me. And I'm, I'm really at peace that that's that it was part of his plan. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm, I'm really just excited about what what's coming down the road, and um, and I want to continue to try to be uh, as obedient as I can be uh, to him, to the Lord, to God, and um, see where He has Catherine and I. But we're we're both at peace. We we know we've been blessed abundantly at Georgia. I mean, let's face it. 15 years at a major institution, an SEC school, uh, just just to get the job to begin with was kind of a miracle, you know. So uh, we're, we're thankful, we're blessed. Greg, uh, what, what's your reaction to some of the uh, maybe backlash uh, following this decision from some of the fan base? Uh, I expected it. I think. Uh, Decisions of this nature uh, are very difficult. Uh, our fans are passionate. Uh, 
Mark has tremendous support. Uh, I mean, obviously, with the the way Mark connects with people, uh, sure. I mean, I've I've been uh, uh, the recipient of of you know emails on both sides. So uh, it it goes with the territory. Uh, I understand it. Um, I wish I could respond to all of them, but that may take some time. Uh, but I understand it. it. It just goes with the territory of, of uh, being in a leadership position. Greg, will you, uh, I apologize for a question on the search, yeah. but will you hire a search firm and will you consider anybody other than sitting head coaches? Yeah, I'll retain uh, the services of a search firm uh, in some capacity. And uh, I think the, the job is wide open. Coach, do you have a bowl preference? And how do you want the Mark Richt era of Georgia football to be remembered? Well, I don't have a preference. Uh, there's a lot of great bowls out there. Um, Greg and I were talking briefly about that on the way over here. And, and so uh, I think I think the bowls are just starting to kind of crank up and try to figure out who's going to go where and, and all that. I'm just thankful we're going to a bowl, really. Um, it's, a, it's a great experience. I'm glad we get a chance to uh, play one more game. I'm glad I'm going to get a chance to be with the guys, you know, here for another month or so. And, um, and uh, I, I, you know, I really, I really would love for our seniors to get that 40th game. It's, it's a benchmark that not a lot of guys get a chance to have. And, and part of it is the fact that we play 12 games now and all that. It's not like in Coach Dooley's day, you know, when they went 40 in his day, you know, that's pretty, ex pretty exceptional. Um, but, um, and, but how do I want how do I want this to be my yeah just um, that he loved Georgia and he did it uh, he did it uh, uh, the right way and uh, he did it he did it uh, hopefully in such a way that it was well pleasing to the Lord. Coach, what's your proudest accomplishment from your time coaching here? And then what's one thing that you wish you could do differently? Yeah. Uh, proudest accomplishment. I, I think just watching guys leave here ready to be a man. And when I say that, just ready to be a good husband and a good father and a, and a good uh, good citizen of our country and hopefully a leader. You know, I think we're we're void of some leadership in certain areas uh, around you know our communities. And I think you know that's what that's what excites me the most uh, to think that uh, I, I had a part to play in that. Uh, and then what was the other question? What do you do something differently? Differently? Uh, I think the only thing that I, I miss, I mean, I really miss co hands-on coaching, the coaching of the quarterbacks, the, 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 the calling of the games, the plays, you know. I think, I, I, I mean, I miss that. I, when I turned it over to Mike Bobo, he was more than ready to do it and did an unbelievably good job, uh, in my opinion. But uh, at the time, I guess the combination of the weight of the job and uh, feeling like, like when if all you do is coach quarterbacks and call plays, you can spend your whole off season just coaching ball. You can spend your whole off season going to visit people and and get new ideas and all that kind of thing. And I found as a head coach, um, there just wasn't as much time to do that. There was always this to do and that to do and this to do and that to do. In season, people don't really expect a lot from me in regard to speaking engagements or being here for this or that or the other. But as soon as the season ends, everybody's like, well, coach is free. He's not doing anything. So let's see if we can get him to help us out here and there. And uh, and I enjoy doing a lot of those things. Uh, but but it, you don't really have the time, in my opinion, that you need uh, to do it, but if I had to do it again, uh, or if I, I, I'll go, I won't say so much going backwards as much going forward. If I do uh, decide to uh, coach again, that especially as a head coach and trying to do these things, which I would want to do, I just got to make sure there's enough support around me to handle uh, certain things, and then also um, let people know on the front end. Hey, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be coaching the off season too. I'm gonna be preparing to uh, get us ready for the season and just get the expectations where we understand them on the front end. When I first came in, I'd never been a head coach. I didn't I didn't know anything. <laughs> you know, I knew a little bit. <laughs> Looking at Coach Dooley over there, but uh, 
you know, there's a lot of things I just didn't know. I didn't know the Georgia culture. I didn't know a lot of things. And uh, so, you know, I, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. And uh, I think I, I, if as far as a regret, I regret or not even so much regret, but I miss I miss the hands-on coaching part the most. Hey, Matt, one more question. I'll make it a two-parter then, uh, Greg. <laughs> the first one will be no comment. What's the second one? I was going to ask uh, Greg uh, re regarding recruiting, uh, who, who will be on the road, uh, and I think I might have forgotten my second part. You know, I'm not sure who's on the road. Uh, that's sort of a moving target here, but uh, um, certainly um, our coaches, uh, or at least some, will be on the road. But uh, we talked about a little bit about that briefly, but. Uh, I really don't know the exact details of, of who's seeing who or uh, who's out right now. The other part was, uh, how much uh, will this hire define uh, your uh, ethics? I think every hire does. Uh, uh, we've, we've uh, that's, that's the role and the responsibility of athletic directors, just as the uh, other positions uh, around the country like this. So it's, uh, it's just part of, part of our job. Uh, you're right. We are judged upon the success <coughs> of uh, particular, it, particularly in football, due to the level of the uh, interest and uh, uh, the revenue it does generate for our programs. But sure, I mean, I know that, and uh, I'm accountable for everything here. So uh, I understand that, and uh, I accept that responsibility. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Gene.